Hey guys, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to install Kali Linux on an external hard disk or on the primary hard disk itself, along with the uh, other operating systems such as Windows. So, the problem with installing Kali Linux is if you install this Kali Linux on the primary disk or on an external hard disk, only the operating system will be installed on the external disk. The bootloader will still gets installed in the primary disk where the windows or other operating systems bootloader is initially installed so if you install the linux on an external disk and if you take that uh, disk and connect it into another pc it won't work because that particular disk will only contain the operating system the bootloader will present in another disk uh, the which is the primary disk where you initially installed your uh, windows uh, machine so first you need to download the Kali Linux operating system first click on download and it will take you to this page here scroll down and click on live boot so currently the version is 2024.2 so here you can see three uh, different versions so you can click on this 64 bit uh, point release live image uh, which is up around 4.3 GB you can download it now we need a tool called Rufus to create the bootable disk. So connect a pen drive to your PC and download this uh, software called Rufus. You can download the Rufus 54.5.exe. So once installed, open this Rufus software. So this is the Rufus software. Here you have to select the pen drive you have installed. So in my case, which is H, and then here you have to click on select and you have to select the operating system you have downloaded in my case this one and once selected click on open and then uh, here leave all the option as default and then click on start it will create the bootable disk and uh, let me show you so when you click on start you will get two options write in iso image mode which is recommended and also write in dd image mode so let me cancel it because i have already created it so the difference between iso image and dd image is uh, when you start the installation you might face problems such as unable to uh, load the operating system from the bootable disk or unable to load the media file in such cases you can delete that uh, operating system you created and you can try again with dd image mode now uh, tried with iso image mode but it didn't work so i created again with uh, dd image mode you can see i have uh, two disks connected so one is the pen drive which has the uh, portable live disk and the other one is 500 gb ssd so i will be installing the operating system on this uh, external disk so I can use this external disk and I can connect it to any other PC and I can boot into Windows sorry Linux so the entire operating system along with the bootloader will be installed onto this external uh, disk once the bootable disk is ready restart your system and while it is restarting press F2 so that it will boot into BIOS mode the key combination may be different depending on the device manufacturer. For Dell, it is F2. And then click on boot sequence. And as you can see here, here Windows is the first uh, bootloader option and uh, pen drive is the second. So you need to use the up and down arrow to change the sequence. So bring the pen drive to the top and then click on exit and it will boot into the Linux operating system. You can see it got put into Linux. Click on Live System and click on OK. So we are not going to install it now, but we will start the uh, some free task which is necessary to start the installation. Then open the terminal and type G parted uh, and then enter. This is the tool which is used for partitioning, so which is similar to disk partition in Windows. Once it loads, you can click here 
and it will list all the disk which is connected to your system in my case i have four disks the first one is hdd of 1 tb and second one is samsung ssd and third one is the pen drive which has the live uh, image of linux and the fourth one is the disk uh, where we will install the uh, linux operating system so now select the one which has the windows boot image in my case it is the second one uh, the samsung one so click on the second one and it will show you the all the partition of the disk and as you can see here the first partition is esp and the flag is set to boot and esp as you can see here this esp partition is used for storing the uh, bootloader in my case i have windows bootloader installed so if i continue without changing the uh, flags what will happen is kali linux will also install the bootloader into this esp uh, partition so i need to make sure that kali linux installer is not able to detect that there is an existing esp partition in my system so i need to remove this flag boot and esp from this uh, partition so right click on that partition and then change the flag and uncheck boot by default it will auto automatically unselect esp and it will select msp data and click on close as you can see the flag got changed then open kali.arc and download installer image the live image is used only for disabling the flags so now we will download the installer image again and we will follow the same step but once we boot into linux environment instead of selecting the live we will go for uh, advanced installation option so now we got into kali linux installer so here select advanced install option which is the last option click on enter and here click on graphical installer click on enter and click on install here select the language country and then click on continue and let it detect the installation media so in this step it will fail sometimes it will fail if you select iso image mode so if it fails in this step then go back and uh, format your pen drive and again create another image with dd image mode so as you can see we got some error like the missing firmware files ath 10 k so usually the ath 10 k is uh, related to wi-fi so i'm guessing so once the installation is complete i won't be able to connect wi-fi but i i know how to fix this so we need to download the firmware files and you have to place it inside the firmware folder so then reboot your system it will work so now i will click on no and i'll click on continue now it is detecting the wi-fi and ethernet if it detects wi-fi you can continue and you can uh, select the wi-fi network and uh, you can continue with the next step but if it fails then you can go with the ethernet by connecting your mobile uh, with an usb cable and turning on the uh, usb tethering so as you can see our system has detected usb ethernet so click on continue so now it is asking for host name and uh, the host name this is the host name you can leave it kali or you can type whatever you want so i have changed it to kali user and i will click on continue and now the domain name you can type kali.org you can see I have type kali.org and click on continue and here it is asking for the full name for the user so so here I will type the username so this username will come up as the login username for your system here also I will type kali user you can see click on continue so this will be the username and here it is asking for password I will type the password 
here select the manual so that you can manually choose how much space you need to allocate for each partition we will be creating five partition home boot root swap and esp uh, type uh, how much space you want i will go with uh, 10 gb and click on continue and here click on beginning and here the mount point click on mount point sorry click on use as and click on continue here click on swap area so we will be doing 10 gb swap area then click on continue so use as swap area and then click on done setting the partition and click on continue you can see we got 10 gb partition and then again 400 g free space click on the free space and click on continue and click on create new partition now we will be creating a, a boot partition I will go with 15 GB and click on continue in the beginning and here uh, mount point click on mount point and click on continue here select boot and then click on done setting of the partition and click on continue we got swap and boot similarly create partition for home root and ESP create new partition this and click on continue and you can see these are the partitions and uh, right chains click on yes and click on continue so this will create the partitions on your system so now the installation has started so wait for it to finish now installation is completed it is asking installation is complete it's time to boot into your new system so we need to make sure that we have unplugged the usb drive so i will unplug and click on reboot So click on continue. So it is finishing up the installation. It is uh, getting rebooted. While it is rebooting, I have raised up to to go into BIOS mode. As you can see here, I have only one boot sequence, which is Samsung SSD, which means it is the Windows boot manager. So now I need to add second option, which is Kali Linux. So I need to click on add boot option. If I click on file system 1 it shows the EFI folder which has the uh, windows boot manager as you can see you can see Microsoft here so I will select FS0 which has another EFI folder if I open it you will see Kali option so which has the Kali Linux uh, grub bootloader select the grub x64 dot EFI and then click on ok this will create a new bootloader entry so now we need to make sure that Kali Linux is the first option then second is the window so click on Kali Linux and use the up arrow to bring it to the top then click on apply and exit now it is getting rebooted so now it got booted into Kali Linux select the first option and hit enter So this is the Kali Linux operating system. It is asking you to enter the username and password. Username is Kali SL. So when you click on it, it will ask you to enter the password. Enter the password which you used while the setup. Click on enter. So this is the Kali Linux operating system. I have again opened Gparted. As you can see, we have three disks. The Kali Linux disk has uh, the partition with boot and ESP and the primary disk doesn't have it. So I will click on the primary disk, click on manage uh, plaques and then select boot. It will automatically select ESP then click on close. Now we will have both the disk with ESP partition. I have booted into windows. After booting I have connected the SSD. As you can see here, it has uh, 300 GB of unallocated space so what I will do is I will right click on it and click on new simple volume and then click on next 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 so this will create a new partition which can be used by both Windows and Linux 